was the laser cutter easy to set up? You know, it was the most unbelievable pain in the derriere I have ever dealt with in my entire life. It, it involves, um, involves receipt paper that I was able to steal from the convenience store because they know me and they're nice to me. And, oh, by the way, 7-Elevens are the greatest place in the world to test your robots because the floor is clean, smooth, and flat, and it has a grid already built in of one foot by one foot squares, and they have coffee. So go to 7-Eleven <laughs> and become friends with them. But um, So these, all these little papers with little dots on them, those are, these are burn marks from the laser. And what happens is you wrap this little piece of paper around the mirror that you're testing, and you test fire the laser, and it, it puts a little dot on the paper, and then you move the head and shoot it again and compare the dots. And if they overlap, then you're good, and you try it a little bit farther down. And if they don't, then you adjust the laser, or adjust the mirror. And there's a total of three mirrors, which all have to be not only adjusted, but adjusted in succession, so they all work together. And, um, and then after all of that, the, the focal length is, can, the, the, the total thickness that it can cut is maybe, maybe four millimeters at most, maybe, closer to probably two or three millimeters. And so not only, if you're going through something really thick, not only do you actually have to raise the deck to put it back in focus so it can go deeper, but the deck has to be perfectly in plane all the way across. And I got to a point where it was cutting the top half perfectly, but it, the whole deck slanted down. So as it got down, the beam was out of focus. And so I literally had to shim the deck level flat and in a single plane to get it to work. It probably was four hours straight of doing nothing but little paper tests and um, and a million uh, little test cuts, you know, just cutting rectangles over and over and over, just cutting squares out of everything um, to test it. It was a lot of setup to cut to the chase. Huh. That's, it doesn't sound as bad as I thought it would be, like involving burning your eyes out and stuff. <laughs> you know, I am actually pretty amazed with how idiot proof they've made it. Um, there's lockouts, there's blowers, because I thought of that too, actually. Because once I lifted the lid while it was cutting accidentally, I, th I thought it was done, and, um, and it shut down immediately. And, uh, so there's lockouts on the lid, on both lids. There's lockouts on there's magnetic, you know, sensors on everything. The glass you look through is is shielded, so you know can't get through the glass. Um, no, my biggest my biggest concern is is fumes and fire at this point, and I've pretty much taken care of the fumes. So my only real concern is fire, cool. and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I suppose. Well, one of the things that I saw for laser cutters is um, at Spikensee Labs, they're, they're the ones who make like the dice kit or the, you know, the watch that looks like a bomb kit. <laughs> I right. forget the name right. of it. Um, but they, they're cutting that like constantly. And when I visited, mm -hmm. they had to cut like a gajillion of the watches. And so what they had set up was a webcam overhead so that they could watch the laser remotely. And then when it was done, then they were able to easily like check and see and run over and put in a new piece of plastic. So that's actually a really good idea. Um, right now it's close enough to the computer that I can, I can see it. But when I first, when I, when I set the head for its starting position at zero, zero position, I could like physically, you know, stand up and look over my desk to be able to see it. Um, I like that camera idea. Maybe that's what I'll use. I have a bunch of those little $39 Chinese one inch cube cameras that don't work. Uh, little wireless ones that you should never buy. Um, maybe I'll try one of those. That's a really good idea. Yeah, for sure.
Uh, and like in the chat, Harry asks for line detection. What frequency of light are you using? Uh, line detection. Uh, the the laser has no ability oh, to I know. Oh, I think he meant the line sensor module for your robot. Oh, oh, line. Those are uh, it's uh, uh crap. Uh, QRD one 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 four sensors, and they've got to be either nine forty or eight fifty nanometer. Probably nine forty. Okay. Cool. Sure, right, number nine forty. It's uh, is that on the the threshold of infrared or no, like near other, infrared, or is it actually? No, visible? it's the other way. Nine forty is the very, very, very infrared. The eight fifty is the infrared, but slightly red in color if you get your eye really close okay. to it. And eight fifty right, is like, um, is night vision, and then night nine forty is you can't see it at all. Okay. Um, my question after that was, is there any sensors that'll do like 400 nanometers? Uh, uh, God, at, at 400 nanometers, you're, I would say, close to the range of like just an LDR, just a light, just a light there, sensor. Just there a, is a sensor that converts light into frequency, so... Maybe getting one tuned for your specific wavelength would help. Right, I well, bring it up. I can tell you real quick, the um, the the sensor holes are four four in a square and they're they're regular spacing, point one spacing. Um, if you I, actually I tell you what, I, I can make you deal with sentry. Um, shoot me um, uh, I'll put my email in the chat. Shoot me an email. And I will send you a version one of these for nothing. Uh, they're because I just have like twenty of them banging around, and you right. Can, uh, the reason I ask is, you know, many years ago in our projects, we were doing light sensing to read uh, basically a huge uh, strip of paper or uh, silk screen mylar with you know print on it, and we were trying to figure out what wavelength worked, and we were getting different you know tapes, and some were silk screen, some were inkjet. And we found that some worked at IR, some worked at visible. And it's like, well, how come this tape works and that one doesn't? It's like, well, because this one is, you know, silk screen and this one is, you know, printer ink. Right. Actually, you know, it's funny you say that because I've had, um, I've had that problem printing out um, encoder discs and um, different printing methods. Uh, it's the, you know, the black. Right, you're printing. Different printing methods will work, and some will not work, depending on. Uh, like my regular printer, printer works fine, and it appears to be black to the sensor. But if I do that with a with toner with a Xerox copier, it reflects off the black just as much as it reflects off the white. And right, that's the reason I brought it up. Is that even though it looks black pigment to the eye, it might not be the same to. Uh, you know, depending if it's infrared or as you're saying, the, the wavelength you're trying to use as the sensor, the pigment or ink you're using makes a difference. Well, it's funny because um, you want to change the sensor and I just change the pigment. <laughs> right, or why not use a sensor that can work over a wider range? <laughs> well, mine, these line follow sensors were, were in essence based on uh, white typing paper and black electrical tape. And so, and I and I figured 99.9% .9 of the people who are going to be buying and using that sensor are going to make the, their their tracks out of electrical tape because it's cheap and you got it. And so it's cheap think, and it's easy and and it works. I I said the wrong I said the e word. <laughs> <laughs> Dunce cap for you. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I will go get my copper foil and go make one and go have someone take a picture. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, all right, so yeah, thanks for giving that little. Oh, wait, for people who have used laser cuts, anyone try purging gas? Oh. Yep. Thanks for giving that little Word. spiel. I'll answer the chat here. Oh. We keep interrupting each other. That's okay. Thanks for coming to the party, Chris. 